other day the state of Connecticut ratified the so-called uh, Equal Rights Amendment, uh, bringing at that point the total to 28 states out of the 38 required to graft the amendment onto the Constitution. Uh, the count would have risen to 29, <clears throat> except that on the same day the state of Nebraska voted to rescind its previous approval of ERA, as the Women's Right Amendment is usually referred to, uh, and therein hangs a, a tale. The legislature in Nebraska was not reacting to opposition to ERA mobilized by sexist males, but by women, many of whom on second blush are discovering in the amendment implications they regard as inimical to the best interests of American women. The national chairman of the movement to stop ERA is Mrs. Phyllis Schlafly, who is here today and raring to go. Mrs. Schlafly is a graduate of Washington University in St. Louis with a graduate degree from Radcliffe. She is the mother of six children and author of several books, a former vice president of the National Federation of Republican Women, and a national chairman of the United States Bicentennial Committee. Dr. Ann Scott is vice president for legislation for the National Organization of Women, which is ordinarily committed to ERA. Mrs. Scott is a writer who took a doctorate at the University of Seattle studying Shakespeare. She was a consultant in 1971 to the Secretary of Labor on Women's Affairs and has acted as a voluntary lobbyist for all legislation dealing with women's rights. With the National Organization for Women, we're an organization of men and women dedicated to bringing women into the mainstream of American life. We do I not stand discriminate on the basis of sex. Thank you. The proposed, uh, the proposed constitutional amendment passed overwhelmingly by the Senate and the House uh, holds that, quote, equality of rights under the law shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or any state on account of sex. That doesn't sound particularly subversive, and I would therefore like to begin by asking Mrs. Schlafly to state her principal objection to ERA. Well, it's the very innocuous wording of the amendment that is the reason why many people didn't realize in the beginning what unfortunate consequences it would have. But fortunately, the amending process calls for a full-blown debate in the state legislatures around the country, and this is where we find out some of the things that were not originally realized by many people who voted for it. Uh, we find, as we look into the matter, that ERA won't give women anything which they haven't already got or have a way of getting. But on the other hand, it will take away from women some of the most important rights and benefits and exemptions we now have. What would be an example of that? Well, a great glaring example on which there's full agreement between both the proponents and the opponents is the matter of the draft. Women are exempt from the draft. Selective service says only young men of age 18 have to register. But the Equal Rights Amendment will positively make women subject to the draft and on an equal basis with men. Uh, nor could you have a system whereby the women would get all the nice, easy desk jobs and the men get all the fighting jobs. It would have to be equal across the board, uh, in combat, on warships, and all up and down the line. Do you agree with that, Dr. Scott? Uh, there is no question that if the Equal Rights Amendment is passed, that women would become subject to the draft. However, I think that uh, we have a situation now where the draft is going by the boards. And furthermore, I think the question is not one of the rights of women here, but it is the question of the draft. Clearly, no sane parent would want to see either child, either a son or a daughter, subject to the draft. But if women are to be citizens and citizens are to be subject to the draft, then women should take the responsibilities as well as the rights of citizenship. But it's not simply a question of being subject to the draft. It is also a question of denial of opportunity. There are many situations in which women could benefit from the draft. They already are you in might, the service. You might become a war hero. Why not? Yeah. But why, why, why a woman did win the Congressional Medal of Honor, the second winner of the Congressional Medal of Honor.